What should you do if you want to start your own agency? Four or five months in, the company ran out of money. What was the hardest thing I've learned from my experience? I know it just sounds horrible. It just changed my life from then on. Hello, hello, and welcome back. I thought I'd make a quick video about answering the most common questions that I get about the early days of my independent freelancing recruiting career slash the early days of also my agency. But before we get started, if you are excited to hear more, don't forget, please support a fellow recruiter. Give us a like, subscribe, click that bell. It really means a lot. How much money did you start with? Short answer is zero. I remember the early days where after I got my first job at the nationwide staffing firm, I actually left that after my first year, billing over half a million dollars to join an early stage startup. Why? If you don't know, make sure you watch the previous video I made about my story. But to give you a little spark notes is that typically most people start recruiting on the agency world and typically you either stay in the agency world or you go in-house. Uh, agency world is where you're kind of like consultants, right? You work with a lot of different startups, a lot of different companies, helping them on a lot of different positions. Positions, whereas in-house you're actually joining one company so think of like Google or Netflix and all you're doing is finding people for your company that you're working at right so you're only focused on one company and you're really hands-on with the sourcing outreach all of the interviewing and ultimately negotiating and onboarding so for me I did a year and I thought there was really no reason for me to stay longer after the first year I'm like you know what I could grow more I can make more money but at that point I wasn't really uh, motivated specifically just on making more income and I thought, hey, at, um, at that point, I learned a lot and enough about what end-to-end -end recruiting was. And I kind of wanted to see what life would be like on the other side in terms of uh, internal uh, in-house. So basically what I did is I essentially joined a super early stage kind of fashion tech startup. And I wish I did my due diligence. Why? Because four or five months in, the company ran out of money, couldn't raise, and now I had to find another job. So first rule is make sure that if you do get a job, ask a lot of questions. I Most of the questions that I asked were very surface level. They weren't really focused now about like the deeper stuff, like the founder's background, how you know sticky and how successful is the current product, uh, the makeup of the team, how much is the runway, culture, all that stuff. So in retrospect, I'd have done things completely different. But I basically found myself like on the job market again. And I thought, hey, because I'm very entrepreneurial, I've done a bunch of other stuff before. I'm like, you know what? I had such a really good experience with my job. Might as well just kind of work for myself because I developed really, really strong relationships with clients, really strong relationships with candidates. I felt like I wouldn't be starting from scratch. It'd just be a really great kind of natural progression to jump off and leverage and get my kind of independent kind of recruiting career kicked off. So when I decided to do that, I didn't have a job and I didn't have any savings. And so for me to start my agency, I actually had to borrow my now wife's credit card. I think I borrowed it for um, incorporating costs, uh, initial accounting costs, initial kind of legal lawyer costs, make sure they go over the engagement agreement. But what helps is that if you have a recruiting job, you would have already had exposure to like what agreements they use and you can kind of really use that to kind of uh, start as a stepping stone and really modify your own unique one. So I think that really helped in retrospect. Um, and then helping with like recruiter light in the early days and um, a couple other tools. But I think in the beginning it was about 15, maybe 12 to 1500 startup cost. It's a little bit higher also for the reason because I was in New York City. New York City is notorious for being one of the most expensive cities in the States to start and incorporate any business. So I think if you lived anywhere else, it would have been much cheaper. How much did you spend on tools? So when I'm starting out and as you know, whether it's a business or freelance, you literally have no money or you have a very, very tight budget. So I wanted to be able to be as lean as possible. I think in recruiting, it's very easy to be distracted with so many different tools and options out there. And it can be honestly very overwhelming. You could be doing demos of two to three new products every single day for eternity. And so for me, what really, really helped here, and you'll, you'll notice that this will become a theme, is I had a recruiting job before that. So I knew some of the biggest stuff that I need to focus on. I knew the fundamentals and I knew that I could do 99% of the business without spending and splurging on so many other unnecessary products. So as a result, I was like super lean. I didn't, I couldn't afford any like ATS or systems at that time. I got by with Excel. Uh, we then kind of over the uh, next couple of years upgraded Excel to Airtable, which is kind of like Excel with more functionality. And now I kind of use a modified version of that as my current CMS. And so I was able to save costs there. I think my biggest cost was LinkedIn. Um, I use Google Suites, so I didn't really have to spend additionally any a lot more in terms of Google Docs and Google Sheets, which all came with the suite, which was a 
was super, super helpful. Um, and then I just remember the first year, it was really kind of combination of LinkedIn. I think I also paid for Indeed, maybe Monster, a couple kind of um, early, early Chrome extensions. I can't remember, which is you know pretty minimal in terms of pricing um, and cost and then just Google Sheets and Google Docs. Like the horrible, horrible way to organize, but I think that if you're decent at it to a certain extent, you can kind of get by. And so that was like the first year kind of tech stack that I used on top of Google Suites and calendar and all that fun stuff. So um, honestly, not that much. And even fast forward almost a decade down the line, I don't, I try not to spend so much and I try to still, you know, make an effort every single month to kind of scan and try out new products. But I would say right now, I don't really spend too much on products. Um, if I think, you know, a product is great, if I hear from other people that they're having great experience, I would try something. But I try to kind of keep it lean and budget as much as possible. I think it's very easy to spend way, way too much on tech, not paying enough attention on the fundamentals of how to actually operate and run this business to make it profitable, right? I think that is your number one goal is how with whatever scrappy tools and free tools that you can have to make and get off a profitable business and freelancing business because that should be your number one priority. Nothing else matters, especially when you're starting out the first 30, 60, 90, six months to 12 months of your business. How hard did you work? I worked really, really hard. I think not to pat on my back too much, but I think one of the few qualities that I have that I would like to believe is I like to just work and I can work very hard. I'm the type of person where if I sit down and put my head down, I can just focus on hours at a time. I don't have to go to the bathroom, I don't have to eat lunch, I don't have to eat dinner. I know it just sounds horrible, but I think that's one of my skills slash maybe weaknesses, right? It's a double-edged sword at times because it's very, very easy to burn out, um, to get super tired, to get very stressed out. But um, I knew that if I wanted to bet against myself, even as a freelancer, I didn't really have dreams to kind of scale it out into an actual business. I knew it would require a lot, a lot, a lot of effort to kind of get it off and running. So I remember first year, I worked easily five days uh, every single day of the week, probably till 7, 8, 9 p.m. That would that was common. Um, I also worked probably a good half day, sometimes maybe even a three quarters day, either on Saturday and Sunday. Um, and it was very difficult for me to take breaks. So it was very difficult for me to do vacations or anything else. It was absolutely all consuming. But I told myself, I'm gonna do whatever I can to get this business up and running. And I think it's a really good mindset to have, assuming you know the basics and the fundamentals to get the business up and running with anything that you do. Don't give yourself a one, two, three weeks, 30 days. Give yourself a good six to 12 months saying, I will not quit until 12 months or six months of just nonstop, just action and hardcore work ethic and focus to then be able to determine, okay, is this business for me? If it's not for me, is it working? Should I pivot? Should I change? Should I do something else? What did you make your first year? So during my first year at my job, I remember I built over 500 um, and then my first year, I don't know the exact numbers, but I think I remember billing just under 500. I think it was like maybe 440 to 460. I did about 20, 21 placements full-time in tech just on my own. Um, and that was mind blown. I was super, super stressed and worried that I wasn't gonna make any money. I was honestly happy if I made 50, 60, 80K. When I made my first you know, 100K and I surpassed that milestone, I was pumped. And then I just didn't let go of this theme and I just worked my butt off. And I think um, everyone has different kind of uh, definitions of success. For some people it can be 50, some people it can be 80, some people it can be 100, some people it can be 300. For me, I didn't really have a goal. I'm like, you know what, I just wanna work the hardest that I can this first year so that I can kind of build some sort of cushion, some sort of stability, so that maybe I can kind of reevaluate things moving forward. If I still want to do this, if I was completely burned out, at that point, I'm like, it would be then smart for me to kind of think more about how do I work smarter and not harder. But the first year was just grind, 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 let's go. I'm willing to embrace and suck the pain and I'm just super grateful. I was able to build over 400. That to me is just mind blowing. I think what really helped was being able to do that at my job, knowing that like, hey, if I can just concentrate and focus and just, you know, focus on relationships, focus on being specialized, on just laser focus on a certain number of jobs, like I can do this. And maybe a six figures is attainable, but never in my wildest dreams uh, would I have ever anticipated making this much. I've never made this much money before in my entire life. It just changed my life from then on. Did you hire anybody? So I think when I first started, I just wanted to be a freelance solo recruiter. 
why I was attracted to the flexible lifestyle of doing handful of placements and then traveling the rest of the year or having flexibility to do something else. As you heard my story uh, in, in previous videos, I didn't know if I wanted to be a recruiter for a long time. I'm like, you know what, this could, this just makes sense for now. Um, maybe I want to do something else. Maybe it was a pride thing. Maybe it was an ego thing. You know, I went to a business school and I tried my own startup before that and I'm like, you know what, I want to do, build a tech product or I want to do something else. Never my wildest dreams that I uh, anticipate that I would be a recruiter. The funny thing is, I told myself, you know what, maybe like after one year, we'll revalue do something else. After the first year, I still became a recruiter. After the second year, I still became a recruiter. After the third, I became a recruiter. Now almost a decade, I'm still in it, but the difference is I love it, I embrace it, I, I, I love the profession, I love the career, and I can speak on top of the mountaintops on how amazing career recruiting is. I think when you start a business and when whether it's like a freelance or just a small team, you have to be super, super wary of like your burn, just your your runway, like your expenses. You wanna keep that as low as possible. And so for me in the beginning, my goal wasn't to hire people because that wasn't my definition of success. That wasn't the one thing that motivated me. I was kinda of happy doing my own thing, you know, traveling and doing a couple of years, but fast forward two, three, four years later, I'm like, you know what? I can't do the same thing over and over and over again. This is not sustainable. Like I eventually might have to kind of hire someone. But um, before that, I think when it comes to hiring, like it really comes down to what your goal is. But also even before that, like how well can you do by yourself? Like you cannot fundamentally coach, teach, and manage if you don't know how to do yourself in a sales role like recruiting. So if you can't honestly hit, I would think maybe roughly like 100,000 on your own desk, it probably shouldn't make the most sense for you to hire, right? You need to kind of understand the fundamentals, optimize your systems and processes, and then once you're able to maybe hit like a really great milestone like that, then at that point you can hire. And then when it comes to hiring, it can mean so many different things, full-time, part-time, VAs. At that point, you'd have a really good understanding of what end-to-end -end is, and maybe you can be like, you know what, this is my strength, this is my weakness, here are areas where maybe I can automate, and maybe if I can find someone either in, in, in the States or my country, my residence, or somewhere around the world, you know, where I can afford them by the hour, then so be it. But I think it wasn't only until maybe the fourth, fifth year end where I'm like, you know what, maybe I should hire someone. But for the most part, I was myself. And when I did hire someone, it was a lot of contract, freelance, and part-time. It was only last year where I hired actually my first full-time employee, possibly thinking about hiring one to two more full-time this year as well, as my goals have shifted, my evolution of just running a business have shifted and is now just growing organically. So again, I don't think the, the goal should be to hire some immediately. I think just get to know recruiting and end-to-end -end and, and all the different things, A to Z, really, really, really well, hit a certain level of of milestone or revenue, and then at that point you can decide, okay, cool, do I wanna do this for the long term? If the answer is yes, how do I make it more sustainable? What areas can I optimize? How can I get some of my time back to focus on like more high ticket or, or high priority items? And then you can kind of start your journey from there. What should you do if you want to start your own agency? Do what I did, like get a job first. Like you have no idea if you actually like recruiting. Some some of you might love it. Some of you might just hate it. And some of you might love it, but you don't like the agency side. You just want to do the in-house side. It's totally cool. I think the great thing about our industry is like there's always something for you, uh, anybody, depending on your preferences, strengths, how hard you work, uh, different ways that you can get paid. It's just unlimited in terms of like all the different ways that you can recruit. So my honest advice is like get a job first. And you know, uh, one of the great kind of secondary benefits of that is you learn recruiting really well. You learn the systems and processes of that established company so that if you do want to start your own thing down the line, you don't have to start from scratch thinking, oh man, what tools do I need? What process do I need? You already have exposure to a system that already works and then you can kind of use that as inspiration to build your own so you're not starting from scratch which is like the hardest thing to do for a lot of you who are reaching out saying hey I have no experience in recruiting I don't know where to start honestly if I were to start a recruiting business without a recruiting job um, or work experience prior I don't know if I would do it I don't know if I could do it right so um, I think learn how to get a job if you're not gonna go the job route that's totally cool if you're entrepreneurial just make sure that whoever you can follow online bootcamp course is respectable they have a good track record they're not telling you this is a you know get rich quick thing or money's easy thing you know you want to treat this seriously like any sort of business and it's not like you know drop shipping or selling things on e-com you're dealing with people and you're affecting people people's careers and lives like this is as real as it gets and so like if you're gonna do recruiting treat it seriously because 
because if you don't, then you're gonna end up burning bridges, people are gonna choose not to work with you, they're gonna you know, avoid you or ignore you on the candidate side and client side, you don't want that to happen. So deep down inside, treat it seriously and have a budget or have a boyfriend or girlfriend or husband or wife that can lend you the credit card. Incorporate, like don't take any shortcuts, do it correctly and follow all steps in the right way as best as you can. Treat this business well and it will treat you well. What should be your financial goal in the first year? Again, completely up to you. I think for me, I'm like, you know what, if I can break even, make a little profit, uh, minus New York City taxes, just to be able to afford Trader Joe's or dumplings or some rice, I'd be happy, right? I'd be a successful entrepreneur. And so honestly, that was it. I had no expectations. And then I remember, you know, when I surpassed my first 50K, I was on the moon, right? Passed my first 100K, I'm like, I don't even know what to do with myself. When I passed 200K, I'm like, holy cow, maybe I'm just lucky. And even to this day, super grateful and super just ecstatic and just absolutely unbelievable. I was able to hit the mark that I did. But again, completely up to you. I think if you are doing a full desk recruiting, your goal should be six figures, period. I think um, you know that's a livable income around this country. Uh, hit that first, and then you can obviously scale to 150, 200, 300, 500 plus. But again, whatever is your goal, whatever that you need to break even to support your lifestyle, that is something that requires a lot of thinking. Uh, what is an advice that I can share with someone who's starting on this journey that I learned from my experience. So I would say for me that had the privilege of having a job before that, I just honestly started the same market as that job. Like if you've been watching some of my videos, you would know the importance of being specialized. Like don't recruit all positions underneath the sun. Stay in one industry, stay in one job type, stay in one job type within that industry, right? So um, for example, tech is an example. Engineers in tech is an example. Maybe front end engineers is an example within tech and maybe go even more narrow like uh, JavaScript, mid-level, four to eight years of experience, maybe TypeScript frameworks and Vue, Node, within startups, within tech, within New York City. Like be as focused as possible and get to be the absolute master at that because the better you can do that, the higher quality database that you have, the better um, that you come across and you look in terms of prospective new clients, the more validity and credible that you look when it comes to talking to candidates and the more focused that you can be. If you pick up five roles and they're all different, it requires five different searches um, possibly different tools, you're just gonna end up kind of spreading yourself out too thin and possibly burn out. So be very specialized. If you didn't follow my path and have a job before that, pick something that really is a passion area, uh, area that you have really strong interest in and just learn as much as you can, watch YouTube videos, meet people, talk to candidates, go to events, read articles, just be a sponge and learn as much as possible and focus on one or two different job types within that market and just stick to it your first year. If you watch my videos now, you see that I do a variety of roles. 95% of the roles I work with are very, very specialized. So for me, when I started recruiting, it, it was in tech, product and UX. That's all I did. And eventually over the years, I started got to know like engineering and digital marketing really well. And sometimes if founders really ask me for like some one-off like ops roles or sales roles or finance roles, if I can help, I would, I would just do it. Only because I love recruiting now and I love talking and meeting and learning about new types of professions. But like, I only do that because I've been doing this long enough where I feel very, very confident with all the other pipelines on my desk and I just have, I wanna do whatever I can to help out my friends or founders I have really strong relationships with. What was the hardest thing that I've learned from my experience? I think this can be applied to any business, any demanding freelancing job. For recruiting for me, it was all consuming, right? I worked regularly six days a week and then because uh, of the nature of our work, if you have candidates that are also like in process interviewing other companies, it can be extremely consuming. Like you just have to be on call. It's like it's like if you you know you're an ambulance, you're a doctor, or a surgeon at a hospital, you're always on call. Like how do the interviews go? You always have to get feedback. And if a candidate you know is doing a final, you have to prep them. You have to get feedback. If negotiations are happening, they're not going to stop and wait. If you're going to take a trip to Florida, Miami, or Hawaii, so it was really difficult for me and my relationship with my now wife, but. Also, it was very difficult and stressful if I wanted to do anything, like take a break, short break, 
a, a vacation anywhere. I was always on my phone, always getting calls and texts and um, emails. And I just had to kind of be there to provide the best experience and white glove service I can to the cans and clients because interviews are not gonna stop. The clients are not gonna stop. The cans are not gonna stop. Not, none of them are gonna stop and just wait for you while you go and enjoy a wonderful trip to Europe. Everything is still a go. And if you're in recruiting, Time is of the essence. You're competing against other recruiters, you're competing against other offers, so you just have to be on call and be accessible no matter where you are. Not being able to check your email, not being able to check your phone is, is a horrible excuse and it's gonna result to just poor experience. And if you can't do that and you're not willing to put in the work and be accessible the first couple years to get your business off the ground, it might be very, very difficult. You can of course also do this part-time, but also don't expect full-time income from just part-time work, right? You can, of course, if you all you want to do is you know, try to make an extra 20, 30, 50K, even 100K or, or underneath six figures, like that's totally possible with a handful of, of placements. And there's some of that you can, you can just be super lucky and others you can do part-time basis. But if you wanna build a business, have a successful, sustainable freelance career or, or hopefully one that you know you can leverage into a successful long term then yeah you just have to treat it seriously from day one and that's exactly what i did not to say that you have to follow exactly what i did but i just want to be as transparent and real with you that's what it took and um i am happy that i've gotten much better with my time management i'm able to shut things off at a certain time during the week but even now like when i travel when when i'm on the go i always have to kind of to a certain extent be accessible and that is uh, part of the line of work that i accept and i embrace and you know, just hopefully this can help if you are thinking about recruiting, you're thinking about starting your own agency or starting your own freelance, and hope this can give you some valuable tools. That hopefully this can kind of give you a valuable perspective to kind of help you make the decision if you know this is something you continue to want to do, this is something that you want to do, or this is something you are currently doing and just you know want to get better at it. So either way, I hope this helps. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Please drop down a comment. Don't forget to also follow me at Preston underscore Park as I try my best to also post behind this is Khan Daily and excited to hear about your career in recruiting whether you're experienced or just starting out I think it's an amazing time it's never been a better time to start a career in recruiting and I'm excited to meet you all and hear all of your great stories and with that thank you so much and we'll see you on the next one